Hi, it's me JD and welcome back to my channel. I get a lot of questions about what card making supplies I use or what I recommend. When I started card making, you know, I got the basics, I got the paper, I got the scissors, I got the trimmers, I got the embellishments, but there are certain tools and supplies that you didn't think to buy, but you totally should. And that's what this video is going to focus on. A friendly reminder to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Whatever craft desk or working space you have, I highly recommend getting some sort of mat with a grid on it. It could be one of those self-healing cutting mats like I have. Number one, it helps protect your surface. And number two, it helps you align things or center things really quickly. For my fellow crafty YouTubers, it also helps make sure your camera is straight. Speaking of protecting your surface, I also highly encourage and recommend some sort of craft mat or oven mat or just something that you can easily roll up and easily clean um, when you're doing some messy techniques. This includes any ink blending or any watercolor or any like ink smooshing. Creating is bound to get messy, <laughs> so um, you can protect your grid and you know help it extend its lifeline a little bit longer by using a craft mat when you're working with particularly particularly messy techniques. One thing I didn't buy at the beginning but I totally should have was a gel pen and not just any gel pen, a white gel pen. A white gel pen can be used to make snow, it can be used to enhance any stamped or die cut images, it can be used to add highlights to your images to create sort of this bubble effect. And it's perfect for writing on dark areas or dark cardstock. Heat embossing was one of the coolest techniques that really got me into paper crafts. After many, many, many mistakes, I finally got a powder tool. I always try, try to remember to use this tool before doing any heat embossing. I also use it on shaker cards and slider cards to remove any kind of stickiness that will prevent the card from working right. I normally use my micron pens for bullet journaling, but they work really well in card making as well. It's an archival ink, so it's waterproof and fade proof. It comes in various thicknesses from really, really fine to a little bit thicker lines. So I use them to hand draw any basic image or I use them to alter stamped images. I also use these to color with because it's a pigment ink, so it provides really, really good coverage. When it came to string, I never really thought I would end up using it, but there were times where I had a card idea and I'm like, man, I wish I had some string. So I got you know some baker's twine and basic white string on hand just for these occasions. I've used them to make engagement cards, to add a little embellishment on regular cards. String or twine or jute or whatever you're using can add a really nice finishing touch to your handmade card. In some cases, the string is actually part of your card. And I will say that my husband has reached for my craft string because of a project or something not craft related that he needed. So gotta love a multi-purpose craft supply. If you know that you're going to add some rhinestones or sequins to your cards, then just get a gem picker now and save yourself the time and headache later. I've tried my fingers, I've tried tweezers, and nothing really comes close to an actual rhinestone tool picker upper thing. That Yes, that's the official name now. I got mine from Amazon. They were like four or five dollars and it came with two of them and they've been holding up pretty well. It's pretty much a plastic stick with a blob of wax on the end. So you can, you know, invest in a nice fancy um, gem picker upper tool or I've heard wax pencils also work. Just find a tool that, you know, works for you and picks up those beautiful yet pesky little embellishments. Okay, so if you're going to get the Distress inks or Distress Oxide inks or even just plain old watercolors, and that will open up all sorts of techniques and cool effects that you can do with your craft supplies. I have two spray bottles. Not saying you have to have two, I'm just saying I have two. <laughs> and I have two because I use one that was a, like a Distress sprayer, um, so it 
creates big blobs of water splatters. And then I have a really f small mini mister. I use that to add water to my watercolor pans or if I really want like a fine mist of splatters onto my projects. While you're getting your spray bottle out, you might as well invest in some paint brushes. And when I say invest, I mean really you could get the cheapos. Except sometimes they fail on you. You can watch my Chinese New Year <laughs> video for that. Um, but for the most part, a paintbrush will do you some good if you're working on some really fun painting uh, techniques, if you want to color with uh, distress inks, if you want to add splatters to your project, or if you want to make galaxies, paintbrushes are especially great for galaxies. I know some use toothbrushes, but I don't know. I, I prefer the paintbrush and um, an acrylic block technique. I recommend setting aside a few paint brushes that are specifically only for painting and then having one or two smaller paint brushes that are used to like um, dust away any fine particles when you're doing heat embossing or working with glitter. So I always have some foam tape or foam squares on standby. You guys already know they're great for making shaker cards. They're also great for making slider cards or any kind of interactive card you can think of. I also use foam tape a lot just for adding some dimension to my card, either by popping up a sentiment or popping up an image. I've used painter's tape quite often in my card making and paper crafts. It's great for a variety of tasks. I first started by stealing a roll from my husband's toolbox and then as I made more and more cards it just made sense for me to get my own dedicated roll of painter's tape. Like I said, I use them a lot. I use them to hold die cuts to paper. I've used them to make my web of dies if I'm doing some um, mass die cutting. And then I use it to hold down my watercolor paper when I'm doing some watercoloring because it helps prevent the paper from warping. If you like working with stencils, you can also use painter's tape for your stencil and your project to sort of create a hinge so you can see um, what you're stenciling and if you need to check on it <laughs> often so, it, um, so it, you, know, you make sure it doesn't bleed through or it's looking how you want it to look. Or you can just use a painter's tape to hold the stencil in place. It's also been used to give my misty magnets a little handle. And if you want to reduce the potential damage to your paper project, just uh, rub the painter's tape on your skin or your clothes before you apply it to your project. So hopefully it won't rip up your project. To help protect your fingers, I also recommend getting a pair of craft tweezers. These kinds of tweezers are different in that they're kind of reverse engineered. So you can pinch them and then um, to open them and then leave them unpinched, it'll be closed. It's great for holding two pieces together or picking up really delicate things. I'd like to thank Jennifer McGuire for this next tip, but definitely get a lint roller if you do a lot of die cutting and you like to clean as you go. Swiffer cloths also work well, but I like the lint roller for picking up big pieces of paper. And if you're like in a pinch and you need to like get your clothes clean right away because, oh, I don't know, some glitter fell on your lap, raise your hand if that's ever happened to you, then the lint roller will serve dual purpose. So crafting has gotten really fancy over the past few years. There's all kinds of machines and gadgets and gadgets you can use to make really awesome projects. And while not a craft supply or card making supply, in the traditional sense, I recommend getting a surge protector so you can play with all these tools if you have the budget or space for them. Just off the top of my head, there's you know digital die cutting machines such as the uh, Cricut or the Cameo or the Brother Scan and Cut. There's electric die cutting machines such as the Gemini Junior, the Gemini, or the Sizzix Big Shot. There's foil presses, there's heat tools, and oh by the way, how about just some plain old lamps so you can see what you're doing. I really like the surge protector I have and I know it's weird that I want to show you it, but I want to show you the features of it because it's really convenient when you have all these different tools. So it has um, like 12 
outlets, first of all, that's impressive, but the other outlets on the side, they bend back and forth, the black ones, which makes it convenient for different size plugs. And finally, after a few weeks of using the bathroom trash can or just using a plastic bag on my desk, I invested in my own designated crafty trash can. Yes, it even has a foot pedal. I can just step on it and it opens right up. It's small but mighty and holds all of the junk. Let me know down in the comments what card making supply or craft supply that you didn't think to get at first, but it totally helped you out now. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.